On October 10, 2024, Tesla hosted its much-anticipated RoboTaxi event, where it unveiled its new CyberCab vehicle. The event was hosted at a Warner Brothers film set. The theatrical setting was appropriate, as this event was more spectacle than substance. They unveiled prototypes of their CyberCab, a dedicated RoboTaxi with no steering wheel or pedals. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you likely already know that we are very skeptical of autonomous vehicles in general, and especially skeptical of Tesla's self-driving tech. In this video, we'll revisit the current state of self-driving technology, and specifically what we can expect from Tesla's recently unveiled CyberCab. In the event, Elon Musk claimed that existing Tesla cars will begin operating as unsupervised robotaxis in 2025. The CyberCab will begin operating before the end of 2026. If existing Tesla models will be able to operate as autonomous robotaxis, it's not immediately clear what is the purpose of the CyberCab. The CyberCab is a five-seat sedan with no steering wheel or pedals. Musk claims it will be priced at less than $30,000. The idea is that you can buy a CyberCab and operate it as a robotaxi to generate revenue. An individual could theoretically buy up to 10 CyberCabs and operate them like a shepherd attending to a flock of sheep. You send the cars out to drive on their own. They can come back to home base to be charged, cleaned, etc. They also unveiled an autonomous robo-van, capable of carrying up to 14 passengers. Tesla has not yet disclosed pricing or an estimated release date for the robo-van. If Tesla can actually release a robo-taxi by 2026 for less than $30,000, that would be pretty incredible. According to Salary.com, the median Uber driver in the United States makes $39,000 per year. If the Tesla CyberCab can generate a similar amount of revenue, it could pay for itself in less than a year. But just because Elon Musk says the CyberCab will be operating by 2026, doesn't mean that this will actually happen. It's useful to look back at Musk's history of over-optimistic predictions. Let's listen to a short clip of Elon Musk talking about autonomy eight years ago, all the way back in 2016. Well, I, I mean, I think, I mean, I really would consider autonomous driving to be basically a solved problem. I, I think we're basically um, less than two years away from complete autonomy. Wow. Well, complete. Wow. Safer than a human. Um, however, regulators will take um, I think at least another year, at least another year, and because it's going to depend on which, what part of the world you're in. So according to Musk, as of 2016, autonomy was basically a solved problem. By 2018, they would have the technical capability of full, unsupervised autonomy that is safer than a human. Possibly by 2019, they'll be approved by regulators to operate fully autonomous robo-taxis. Now it's 2024, and none of these things have happened. Since 2016, Musk has claimed the Tesla robotaxi is one year away almost every single year, and thus far, he's been wrong every single time. At this point, Musk is the boy who cried wolf. Given his abysmal track record of timelines, it's safe to disregard any predictions he makes going forward. Musk continues to claim that Tesla's full self-driving technology is already far safer than human drivers. Musk claims the robotaxi will be up to 30 times safer than the average human driver. One of the reasons why... Oh, may the, the, the computer can be so much better than a person is that we have millions of cars that are training uh, in, on driving. So it's like, it's like living millions of lives simultaneously and seeing very unusual s situations that a person in their entire lifetime would not see. It's, it's, so with, with that amount of training data, it's obviously going to be much better than what a human could be because um, you can't live a million lives. Um, and it's also, it can see in all directions simultaneously, and it doesn't get tired or, or text or any of those things. So uh, it will naturally be, like, like I said, uh, 10, 20, 30 times safer than a human, just um, for all those reasons. We've already extensively debunked Tesla's safety claims in previous videos, linked in the description below. But there are a couple of things we would like to add. When Musk implies that an unsupervised Tesla robotaxi is 30 times safer than a human, it is literally impossible for him to know this. A fully autonomous Tesla has never been tested on public roads without supervision. The full self-driving deployed today requires constant oversight from a human in the driver's seat. Dashcam footage from even the latest full self-driving versions reveals frequent driver interventions, both to avoid collisions and to comply with traffic laws. Even if full self-driving assisted driving proves to be safer than unassisted driving, which is highly debatable, that does not translate to an unsupervised Tesla robotaxi being safer than a human driver. So when Musk says the robotaxi will be 10, 20, or even 30 times safer than a human, he's making these numbers up. 
We know that Tesla's full self-driving and autopilot are capable of making mistakes, and often fatal mistakes. Musk and Tesla have repeatedly touted the lower crash rate per mile driven for autopilot versus the national average. We've explained in previous videos why this data is misleading. Recent revelations show that the situation is even worse than we knew. In April of this year, the National Highway Safety Administration released a scathing report about Tesla's autopilot safety. They found that gaps in Tesla's telematic data create uncertainty regarding the actual rate at which vehicles operating with autopilot engaged are involved in crashes. Tesla is not aware of every crash involving autopilot, even for severe crashes because of gaps in telematic reporting. Tesla largely only receives data for crashes with pyrotechnic deployment. Pyrotechnic deployment refers to deployment of airbags or other passive protection systems. But only 18% of police reported crashes include airbag deployments. It's impossible for Tesla to know how safe autopilot is compared to unassisted driving because they don't even know how many crashes autopilot cars get into. Yet to this day, the company continues to publish what we believe are highly misleading and almost certainly erroneous data purporting to show a far lower crash rate when autopilot is engaged. While Tesla has yet to operate any robo-taxis, Google-owned Waymo and GM-owned Cruise were granted permission to operate driverless robo-taxis in San Francisco last summer. In October of 2023, a Cruise robo-taxi dragged a pedestrian 20 feet across the road. After this horrific incident, Cruise's license to operate fully autonomous robo-taxis was suspended. In September of 2024, they were granted permission to resume operations in California, but only with a human safety driver at the wheel. By comparison, Waymo's performance has been significantly better. Unlike Cruise, Waymo has not caused any high-profile accidents, and it has been operating continuously in San Francisco for over one year. So far, Waymo has driven 22 million miles without a human safety driver. During those 22 million miles, they have experienced 84% fewer airbag deployments, 73% fewer injury-causing crashes, and 48% fewer police-reported crashes compared to the average human driver in cities where they operate. From what I can tell, Waymo has been rigorous and transparent with its collection of crash data. It is almost certainly true that riding in a Waymo is safer than driving for the average person. However, there is a major caveat. Waymos are programmed to drive conservatively. They often get confused and just stop in the middle of the street, often needing intervention from a human technician to start driving again. While this conservative driving style does reduce the chances of a collision, it can also disrupt traffic and in some cases obstruct the path of emergency vehicles. And because they are powered by artificial intelligence, sometimes they do things that are difficult to explain. For example, there have been many incidents where Waymo cars in the Waymo parking lot will randomly start honking at each other for no apparent reason, causing noise pollution for the nearby residents. So how will Tesla's planned cybercab compare to Waymo or Cruise? Tesla follows a very different philosophy in developing and self-driving tech. Waymo and Cruise operate their robo-taxis in geo-fenced areas. For example, Waymo currently only operates in San Francisco, Phoenix, Los Angeles, and Austin. Before they start operating in a city, they send sensor-equipped cars to drive across every single street in that city. They create a detailed map with all the information such as speed limits, traffic signs, lane paint, right turn only lanes, crosswalks, etc. This is a meticulous process that can take months. When the Waymo or Cruise robo-taxi starts operating in the city, it won't be caught off guard by any strange street signs or road markings because these have all been pre-mapped. Both Waymo and Cruise make use of both LiDAR and radars to map their surroundings and see how far away various objects are. The LiDAR, radar, and associated computers aren't cheap. Neither Waymo nor Cruise disclose the cost of each of their cars, but some analysts estimate the cost to be around $250,000. If robotaxis really cost that much, their economics may be challenging. In theory, autonomous robotaxis should have very high profit margins because you don't have to pay a human driver. But at least for now, Waymo and Cruise are obliged to employ large staffs of customer support workers and technicians who deal with the frequent issues customers face when riding in the cars. Elon Musk has criticized the approach taken by Waymo and Cruise. He says LiDAR is too expensive to put on a mass market robotaxi. He also criticizes the practice of pre-mapping every city individually. He thinks this is too expensive and time-consuming. Instead, Tesla's full self-driving only relies on the car's cameras, which can observe its surroundings and make driving decisions in real time. Musk claims full self-driving operates similar to a real human. For example, let's say you drive to a new city you've never driven in before. You don't need to make a detailed map ahead of time and pre-program all the turns you're going to make. You understand the rules of the road, so you can easily adapt to any city, even one that you've never driven in before. Tesla's goal is to make a generalized self-driving system that is capable of handling any road in any city. 
If they can achieve this, it will be far more scalable than the geofenced approach favored by Waymo and Cruise. Musk has repeatedly asserted that Tesla's generalized approach is enough to achieve full autonomy, but the company's practices suggest otherwise. Tesla employs so-called data annotators, who review real full self-driving footage and help train Tesla's AI models. According to Business Insider, Tesla has its data annotators spend a disproportionate amount of time reviewing footage from Musk himself and large social media influencers who post dashcam footage on full self-driving. If true, this would mean the full self-driving software is specifically trained to work better on routes where social media influencers are driving. Thus, the footage posted by these influencers may not be representative of what the average person can expect to experience. This is pretty damning, because even when you look at the dashcam footage posted by influencers, full self-driving is nowhere near full autonomy. It requires frequent driver interventions. If there was no one at the wheel, they would get into crashes very frequently. A prominent hacker and Tesla sleuth known as Green the Only claims to have discovered that Tesla ramped up its data collection in the Warner Brothers studio area in the weeks leading up to a robo-taxi showcase, where Tesla vehicles were demonstrated driving with no one behind the wheel. If Tesla's solution was genuinely generalized and 30 times safer than a human driver, as Musk claimed, why would they need to collect data specifically around the event venue? This pattern suggests that Tesla is not as confident in the universality of its self-driving model as it claims. Despite more than a decade of development and billions of miles of real-world data, Tesla remains far from delivering a truly generalized autonomous driving system. Making a generalized self-driving system that can drive at the same level as a human may not even be possible. In addition to unveiling the Cybercab and RoboVan, Tesla used the recent event to showcase progress on their humanoid robot Optimus. Musk continues to tout the utopian potential of the Optimus robot, saying it will usher in an age of abundance. I, I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Yeah. Because I think everyone of the 8 billion people of Earth, I think everyone's going to want their Optimus buddy. They'll be producing products and services. The cost of products and services will decline dramatically, and basically anyone will be able to have any products and services they, they want. It will be an age of abundance, the likes of which people have not, almost no one has envisioned. It will be something special. Unfortunately, like most of Musk's promises, this utopian future of intelligent robots is a pipe dream that's never going to happen, at least not within our lifetimes. The Tesla event indeed had dozens of robots interacting with the guests. However, there is reason to believe that this whole thing was staged. One of the attendees of the event was a well-known technology commentator named Robert Scoble. He claims to have talked to a Tesla engineer who explained that the robots are not fully autonomous. For example, the robot serving drinks was remotely controlled by a human operator. Robert Scoble even went up to one of the robots and asked it directly whether or not it was powered by AI. Hey Optimus, how much of you is AI? I can't disclose just how much. That's something you'll have to find out later. But some or none? <laughs> I would say it might be some. I'm not going to confirm, but it might be some. The voice definitely sounds like that of a real human. He came just short of admitting that he was a human operator controlling the robot remotely. We also have to keep in mind that Tesla has a long history of publishing false or misleading demo videos. The most infamous was a video they released in 2016 showcasing their full self-driving technology. In the beginning of the video, it says the person in the driver's seat is only there for legal reasons. He is not doing anything. The car is driving itself. In a later lawsuit over an autopilot death, Tesla's director of autopilot software was compelled to testify. He admitted that the video was staged. They used 3D mapping of a predetermined route. When they first tried it, the driver had to intervene multiple times. They had to do many takes of the video before they could get one with no driver interventions. In fact, in one of the test runs, the car actually crashed into a fence when it was trying to park. Tesla has since removed the video from its website. After more than a decade of development, Tesla is still yet to demonstrate a car that can drive itself on public roads unsupervised. If you believe they will usher in an age of abundance with an intelligent humanoid robot, I have a bridge to sell you. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Tesla's robotaxi ambitions? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.